Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT Evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Snipe202, on how we can set up some air turbulence. Okay, so to illustrate this, I have the pod racer from the Introduction to Maya 2011 course. So if I were to just play this back, you can see what I've done is I actually have an emitter that has been parented to the end of this engine here. Okay, so it's uh, emitting some particles. And the purpose for this is to set up some, like a heat exhaust type look coming from our engine. Okay, so I'm going to want to adjust the actual particles that are being created. So I'll select a particle and hit Control A to open up my attribute editor. Let's come into the particle shape node. And I'll move the notes down so we can see this a little bit easier here. Now, first thing I'm going to want to do is to adjust the particle type. So I'll come down till we see our render attributes. I'm going to switch the particle render type to maybe something like a cloud. Okay, so now I can add the attributes for the cloud render type. And in here we can adjust the radius, maybe bump it up just a little bit, uh, give us something a little bit larger here. And I'd also like to ensure that these particles actually die off so they don't last forever. Because if I were to play this back right now, the default is to have these particles last the entire animation. And in realistic, uh, in real life, we wouldn't have that with the heat exhaust. It would dissipate. So uh, I'm going to rewind this. And what I want to do is in the particle shape node, let's come up and switch the lifespan to a random range. And then do something pretty tight so that way uh, when I play this back you can see it's it's dying pretty quickly well, maybe not that quickly let's uh, bump this up just a little bit and play this back okay that looks pretty good now, the next thing I'd like to do would be to uh, maybe increase the number of particles well, to do that we're going to come into our emitter and I'll just say set it to a 50 or t a twice the default amount Okay, so if we were to play this back, we're getting quite a few more particles in here. Okay, so the next step would be to apply a texture to these particles. Okay, so I'm going to come into my hypershade, come up to Window, Rendering Editors, open up the hypershade here. Okay, so let's move this over so we can see a little better. Uh, make sure I have my particles selected here. And what I want to do is to create a volumetric material for the particle cloud. Okay, so once that's created, I can select my particle cloud here on my pod racer, right click and assign this new texture to our particle. Okay. All right, let me just uh, view the bottom here so we can take a look at the work area just so we can see this a little bit easier. Okay. Now, what we want to do is to come in and adjust some of these attributes. So the color doesn't really make much difference. Um, since primarily what we're going to want is the alpha channel from this. Okay, so if we scroll down, we can uh, adjust the values like maybe the roundness, uh, as well as maybe giving it some extra noise, um, whatever sort of look we may want to help give us some n a nice alpha channel. So depending on what look you're going for, you may want to adjust this a little bit, but um, You'll, go, you'll see the process that we're going to go through to help give you an idea of what sort of settings you may need to do in order to get the look that you're going for. Okay, so I'm just going to leave these uh, primarily at the defaults here. But we're going to want to make sure that our transparency is not set to nothing or not also, also not set to a full transparency. So we'll just leave this uh, right in the middle here. Okay, so with that set up, what we're going to want to do next is to set up some render layers for our objects. Okay, so we're going to want the particle shape to be on its own render layer. So I'll come into the render layers palette here. Let's go ahead and add this to a new render layer. This will be our particles layer. And then for everything else, we'll add that on its own layer. So I'm going to come in to window, open up my outliner here. That way I can select everything else in my scene and apply that to a new layer. So this will be my pod racer. Okay. So I have my pod racer on one layer and my particles on another render layer. Now if I were to come in to my render view here 
and just do a quick render from my render camera just to see what the position is for everything. We'll see that I do have an image plane set up on here. Okay, so what I want to do is to come in and get rid of that image plane. So I'll come to my, let's go back to the outliner here, select my render camera, go ahead and open up the attribute editor. Let's come back over to our image plane, select it, and then just hit delete. Okay, so that way it won't render out and we'll make sure that we get our nice alpha channel for the particles. Okay, so I'm just going to come up to my render settings, make sure my render settings are set up to render out my entire project here. Okay, rendering out frames 1 to 60. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and just do a batch render. So I'll go ahead and render this out and then pause the video while it renders. Alright, so our render is completed. Let's go ahead and open up After Effects to see how we can composite these together. Okay, so I'll just go to File, Import, and we'll want to import our particles image sequence here. And we'll just leave the interpret footage, footage settings at default. And then we'll come in and import our pod racer sequence as well. Okay, now there's one more image I'd like to import, and that is actually the background, which is this desert here. Okay, and that's going to kind of be our, our backdrop. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit so we can see here. All right, now let's go ahead and import our pod racer as well as the particles. Now if we were to scrub through our timeline right now, we can see that our particles are very dense. And actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move them behind the pod racer. That way they'll uh, be behind that layer there. So what we're going to want to do is to use them and their alpha channel to distort the background. So in this case, the desert image. Okay, so what I want to do is to duplicate the background. And then what we'll do with our particles is to, or I'm sorry, to our uh, duplicated desert here. Let's go to Effect and uh, go to Distort and way down at the bottom we'll go ahead and use a wave warp. Now it looks like it got cut off on the video there but it's at the very bottom. So we can see what this effect is doing to our background here. and We can adjust the settings to get whatever sort of look we may want. But then what we can do is we can tell this distorted version of the background to only be applied where our particles are. So to do that we'll click the middle button here in order to open up our transfer controls pane and then we can adjust the track mat to be an, to use the particles as an alpha mat. Okay, so when I did that it looks like it disappeared. But let's go ahead and scrub forward a little bit and we can see that it's distorting our background image. Okay, so if I were to come to uh, say two seconds, go ahead and change our work area, use the hotkey N and then just do a uh, hit zero to do a RAM preview on this. If I were to play this back, we can see we're getting that nice little distortion effect that's trailing behind our engine. Now we can also come in and add any sort of effects we may want to this distorted desert image. Um, say if we wanted to go in there and throw in uh, liquify, um, anything we may want in order to get different looks. And now even though in this example in Maya I use cloud particles, you could tweak the settings for your particles, uh, adjust the volumetric shader, or even use this technique with some instance geometry to get a really wide variety of results. So this most certainly isn't the only way to get this effect, but that's just one way that we can set up some air turbulence that we can then tweak to fit our needs in post-production.